Today we're going to talk about spaced repetition inside of Notion. I know I have done a video on this before where I explained a use case for spaced repetition. Today what I want to do is share with you just one simple formula for pushing dates forward, which is essentially what spaced repetition is. Spaced repetition is a strategy of learning through repeated review of information. The time intervals between each review is what we're going to customize. And with a Notion formula, push a next review date forward according to these intervals. Let's look into pushing dates forward inside of Notion. Let's get right into it. So here's our database. Let me just zoom in a couple times. We have subject one, two, three, and four. Here are the things we are learning about. This date property here is the first date that you are reviewing your note. We're gonna create another property to the side here that is a checkbox. And I'm just gonna say session one. Let's turn it into a checkbox. So now we have session one and when session one is complete, we can click that checkbox. Now I'm gonna create another property here called next time, or let's say next review. This is going to be a formula. What I'm gonna do is every single time session one is clicked, let's just add three days to the original date. So let's say if property session one, that's all we have to say. So if property session one, which means if it is checked off, then I want to date add, this is a function. Inside of these parentheses, I wanna say date, comma, how many days I wanna to add to the date. So let's say in this instance, I wanna add three days. So let's go three comma days. At the very end, we need a false condition. So I'm just gonna go comma and put in a false condition, which basically says if property session one is not checked, what will it do? Well, if that's the case, let's just keep the original date. So I'm just gonna say prop date. Close all this out with a parentheses, and this is what it should look like. You'll notice that at the top we have June 22nd, 2021. Upon clicking this checkbox, it will add three days to the next review date column. Let's make this a little bit more interesting and add another two checkboxes. So let's say session two, turn this into a checkbox. Session three. Now what I wanna do is whenever we click session two, I wanted to add another three days, session three, another three days to this original date. So we're just gonna keep pushing it forward in time. So the way we're gonna set up this formula now is first what I wanna do is change this first line. I'm gonna change it to session three. I want session three at the top because these formulas kind of have an order of operations. All if statements at the top will respond first, and all if statements at the bottom will respond last. I don't wanna add three days, I wanna add nine days. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it after the first one, and I'm gonna replace session three with session two. And I'm gonna say six days. I'm just gonna do the same thing going down for session one and three days. I wanna be able to close out all three of these if statements by adding three parentheses to close it out at the end. Let's look at how this formula reacts. So session one, if it's clicked, should add three days. Session two, another three days. And session three, another three days. Same goes for all of the other checkboxes and all of the other subjects. So let's make this a little bit more interesting and customize each spaced repetition using the select property. And actually the formula is a lot easier here. Now below here, let's just duplicate this table and I'm gonna make some changes. Firstly, let's rename this maybe to a date pushing select. 
So I got rid of those check boxes. Now let's create some select properties instead. So session one, and let's turn this property into a select property. Now what I'm gonna be able to do, just click into one of these cells, I'm gonna create three different options. Pretty basic, we're gonna say, was this session successful or not successful? What is the level of understanding of this subject? Is it great, good, or poor? Now, instead of writing those words, great, good, and poor, we're going to actually tell the database how many days we want to push forward in the instance of each of those understandings. So let me explain. Let's say there is a great understanding. And if there's a great understanding, I want to push the date for review seven days into the future. So let's just make the first select option seven days. And maybe make the color of this green, indicating we have a great understanding. The second option is going to be four days, and this is signaling a four day push or a good understanding, and I'll label that one maybe blue or yellow. And the third is going to be one day. So I just want this to be pushed one day into the future because we have a poor understanding of this material. And I'm gonna label that one red and I'm gonna duplicate it another two times. What happens when you duplicate a select property is all of the options also come with it. And I'm just going to rename it to session two and do the same. All the select properties come with it. Let's say the first one went pretty well. Let's push it four days. Session two maybe did really, really well. We have a great understanding. Let's push it a week. And then the same for session three and say maybe there was a poor understanding for this subject and then a good and then a great. So now we can mess around with this formula. So very simply, we are just going to be using that date add function. If I could spell it right, date add. Now within here, let's add to the original date, comma, we're gonna have the number of days we wanna add. Like we had before, we could have three days and then in parentheses days. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this value three by adding sessions one, two, and three together. So let's just do another test formula that is temporary. I want to add up sessions one, two, and three. So what I can do to just grab the number from that select property and ignore the word days is to say two number and then put the property name inside. So two number session one will give us four. So what I wanna do is just copy this, go plus, paste, replace one with two, and then do the same thing and replace that one with three. What I'm gonna do is replace that three, that uh, numerical value with this. So I'm just gonna wrap it around parentheses first so I know it's isolated. Press done. Let's go to next review and just replace that three with this number. Deleting sessions two and three columns, the next review date should be four days after the original date, which it is, the 26th. Now, if I were to add to session two a good understanding or a great understanding, I wanna push it a week from the 26th. Not the 22nd, but now we're in session two. I wanna push it seven days from the 26th. We can now push it a week from the 26th. And let's say I wanna push it yet another week from session three, and it will give us July 10th. So this is how we can start pushing dates forward with one very simple formula. So that is two ways to really push dates forward in the simplest way possible, in my opinion, especially in this spaced repetition format. Let's look at how we can kind of visualize this better though. Visually, what I wanna do is I wanna sort everything by whenever the closest next review is, naturally. So I can go to next review and sort ascending. Another thing you can do is create another view. So let's create another view called today. So everything we need to review today and create a filter simply says next review is today. None of the examples we have here lands on today, but let's push one so that it does. Let's say that should work, the 18th. If I go to today, 
it will have all of the subjects I need to review for today. And again, that's filtering. The next review is today, and that is that formula we need. Now let's look at how we can visualize all this inside of a calendar. So it's a little bit tricky with formulas and dates inside of formulas with calendars, but you can view it in a calendar. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna zoom out a couple times. Let's create a new view and make sure it is a calendar. Maybe label this one next review. So automatically this is grouping everything by the original date. So subject one is on the 22nd, that is the original date. I can view a calendar by going to these three dots here, going to calendar by and next review. The only thing that is limiting for this is I can't create new entries through the calendar. So essentially it's kind of like a read only calendar. What I mean by this is if I were to go back to calendar by date, I do have the option to add an item to each one of these days. So that is the only limitation for that. And that's about it. Two different ways to use spaced repetition and how to visualize next review dates. Let's go right into the outro. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Also, recently I published a list, I believe 80 Notion formulas for you guys to copy into your workspace. They're pretty simple formulas. So if you are interested in Notion formulas, that might be an interesting list for you to look at. I'll leave a link to that down below. Other than that, I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.